William Ruto, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you, Stephen. I want to talk politics and I want to talk justice with you. Let's start, if we may, with justice. You are scheduled to face trial at the International Criminal Court in The Hague in April of 2013. Do you intend to present yourself before the court? Mm, I have presented myself before. I have taken myself there even before I was requested. And I intend to present myself at any other time in the future. So if, as is currently planned, there is a trial and you are put on trial in April 2013, you will be there. I thought I said that. I will be there. I just think uh, everybody in this country and across the world wants to know because there is an enormous scrutiny on this case. You mm -hmm. know that people around the world are watching. It's another test case for international justice. And of course, it comes at a time when you are running for the presidency of Kenya. The election is due to be held in March 2013. But with all of that in mind, you are still absolutely committed to going to the ICC in April, one month after the presidential election. Yes, I am. In that case, what's your message to the Kenyan people? Because if you succeed in winning the presidency, almost the first thing you will do is absent yourself from the country. And judging from the way the ICC works, it's very unlikely you would be given bail. So you would be, in effect, an absent president on trial in a foreign country. Uh, I am surprised that you are already aware that we won't be given bail. Really surprised. I'm not saying you won't be, but uh, the way the ICC has worked in the past, usually defendants are not granted bail once the trial has begun. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, and on the advice of my attorneys, it is very clear that um, we haven't breached any of uh, the conditionalities that were attached to our uh, um, uh, to our trial. We have done the best that we could to keep within the uh, limits that were assigned to us, and that is why we are conducting this case while we are away from the Hague. I do not see any of the circumstances that were attached to our trial changing and therefore there will be absolutely no reason for anybody to change the parameters of um, the, uh, the way this case is being conducted. To the best of my knowledge, we will appear in The Hague and uh, as has happened in the past, the case will proceed, we will be required uh, once in a while to be uh, personally present in court, which we will, and uh, the rest of the time conduct our business. So you think it is entirely practical and feasible for you to be both President of Kenya, if you succeed in your election campaign, and a defendant before the ICC facing very serious charges of crimes against humanity? Take into account that uh, both the ICC process and the Constitution of Kenya hold me as um, a man who is innocent. And I do not find any difficulty in a man who is innocent being president of Kenya as a case is running against him in The Hague. Do you think the Kenyan people will want a leader who as I've been looking at the documents before the ICC now, uh, a, a leader who, in your case, faces charges of being a co-conspirator in crimes against humanity, that it is alleged to have been a key planner of a campaign of violence in your home territory of the Rift Valley, who is said and alleged to have supervised the purchase and distribution of weapons, given in instructions on homes to be targeted and people to be displaced or even 
killed. Is that the sort of man facing those sorts of charges that should be seeking the highest office in Kenya? That is a message that my competitors would want to use to persuade the Kenyan electorate not to vote for me. But if the people of Kenya, despite that kind of a campaign, which the people of Kenya know, because they know me, they know William Ruto, they know the charges that have been preferred uh, uh, against me, and they can make the choice whether on the basis of those allegations they can go ahead and vote for me or not. But of course, and if they choose to vote for me, then it tells you very clearly that they have an idea as to how we ended up with those kind of charges against me. But of course the people cannot know whether you are innocent or guilty. You've already mentioned to me the very basic principle that a man is presumed innocent till proven guilty. Mm -hmm. But of course the court has not yet heard the evidence and there has been no verdict. So no one can know what the verdict will be. I just wonder, given the gravity of the charges and the nature of the evidence against you, which we have seen, we've seen it from the uh, Kenyan National Commission on Human Rights, we've seen it from the Philip Wacky Commission report, we've seen it from Kofi Annan's documented evidence. We know that there are very, very serious <laughs> allegations sitting over your head. And on that basis, yes. do you really think it is for the best for Kenya for, to, for you to pursue the presidency? Absolutely. Pre uh, precisely to disabuse this country that a gang of people can conspire, sit in a corner, you know, because you have said many things which are not true. You've talked about Kofi Annan. Kofi Annan has nothing against me. You've talked about uh, the rest of the people. Those reports well, I, I, have, well, been, have, been, have been discounted. Me, what I did was cite evidence, and I've got, I've got paper does copies Annan, here does Kofi Annan of, have of the Kenyan evidence? High Commission on Human Rights report, yeah. which you know names you, you know and names very specific allegations, you know accuses you of a key role in the killing of hundreds and the displacement of thousands of people in your home territory. Do you know that there are two Kenya human rights reports by the same commission saying different things? Are you aware? I'm aware that you have challenged the, I mean, the uh, allegations that have been put before you. Of yeah. course I'm aware of that. But I'm also aware that scores of witnesses have been interviewed and the evidence against you is not based on just one or two voices, mm -hmm. but is based on a whole number are you, of different are you, testimonies. Are you, are you also aware that all those witnesses, especially the key witnesses, have also confessed that they themselves are actually criminals in their own testimony? Are you also aware of that? I'll tell you what I am aware would of. You, would you want to believe a person who is saying, I am a criminal, right? But I am accusing William Ruto of this and this and this. Where will you draw the line? I know that yeah. you have challenged the credibility and veracity of the witnesses who are uh, key to the case against you. But I also know that there are very serious allegations that supporters of yours in the Kalenjin community have intimidated witnesses, have tried to discredit witnesses, and according to a report, an investigation by the Christian Science Monitor newspaper, have conspired, and this is a quote from the minutes of a meeting of the so-called friends of Honorable William Ruto, have actually committed themselves, and these are the direct mm -hmm. quotes, uh, to move I, against I, witnesses. I don't, I don't think, Stephen, you are doing any justice to this uh, interview. Why is that? If you want to go that direction, mm -hmm. you should have alerted me so that I can also bring quotes on what to counter what you're saying. But you haven't heard my quote yet. Let me, not, let me just, let me just and, give you the and, quote and, and then you can respond you to it. you want us to conduct the case in The Hague in this interview. This is not about the case in The Hague. It's the, about how your own friends and supporters have responded to the fact that you now that face is serious not true. charges. I have no friends called friends of William Ruto. They don't exist. It is a fabrication of your source. And I don't think you're going to use this interview to try and give credibility to a source 
that is not verified by anybody, that does not exist in any place. I am William Ruto. Well, these, I do not have friends. These leaked minutes ha, are quite clear. It says those witnesses prepared to testify <laughs> against Ruto should be presented with limited options. They will either be offered a <laughs> handsome cash incentive to drop their case <laughs> or more punitive measures, including assassination. That is garbage. That is garbage. In short. To be quite clear about it then. Direct from the sewer. To be quite clear about it then, this mm. organization, the so-called Friends of Honorable William Ruto, you is, say is never figment, existed. Is a figment of an evil, fertile imagination. As you sit before me now, yeah. the idea, and it is again, it comes with detail and it comes with dates and it comes with times and places, the idea that you incited mm. your people to acts of violence against the supposed enemy in your midst is something that you flat out categorically deny. <laughs> Let me tell you, in fact, some of those dates, first let me tell you, whatever is being said about planning, about executing, about uh, buying of guns, about, that's all fallacy. Absolute fallacy. It did not happen, including facts that, that are so obvious that even on dates when I was allegedly supposed to be distributing guns in my house, there is documentary evidence as to where I was, miles of kilometers from my house, in a public place captured by the Kenyan free media. What further evidence would you need? It's not just you who faces trial at the ICC. There are three other senior Kenyan figures, but one other key figure, Uhuru yes. Kenyatta, who, like you, is running for the presidency. Yep. Do you think that it is likely, before the March election and before the ICC trial, that you and Uhuru Kenyatta will come to some sort of understanding or political deal that only one of you will go forward to actually fight this presidential election. Why would we do that? There are Kenyans who believe you would do it because you will reach an understanding that should one of you become president, the other will take a very senior position, perhaps as vice president. And the understanding will be that both of you will operate on the understanding that you will use the immunity powers that come with the presidency to ensure that this ICC trial never happens. We have absolutely no intention with interfering with the ICC process. Absolutely none. Our quest, or let me speak about myself, my quest for the presidency of this Kenya has nothing to do with the ICC process. I was a candidate at the nomination, at the nomination stage in ODM in 2007. Uhuru Kenyatta was a candidate in 2002. There was no ICC. There was no ICC when we were candidates, uh, when I was a candidate for the ODM nominations in 2007. And therefore, our running this time round should have, uh, nobody should ever think that we are trying to run for president merely because we are suspects, right? We are running because we believe we are leaders and we have a contribution to make to this country at that high level. You are known in Kenya as a very successful businessman. I think it is fair to say that you've never allowed your political career to stand in the way of making money. Would you say that's fair? Uh, I think that's a very wrong statement. First, uh, despite my humble uh, background, uh, I have worked hard. I work very hard and everybody appreciates in this country that William Ruto works very hard. I suppose what I'm getting at is whether politics in this country actually makes it easier to make money. You know, in, in, in many countries politicians are genuinely full-time politicians and when they go into public life, when they seek election, they at the very least put their business interests into blind trusts or have other people run them and leave business altogether. And for your information, I have, I don't do any business. You don't do any moment. business? Whatever, whatever business interests I have, 
they are done by people who run those businesses on a professional basis and, uh, and, 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 and that's it. Now you have faced serious allegations of corruption, you've fought them and you've won court cases and you've had your name cleared. But I'm, as we've discussed, and I think you've agreed, Kenya needs politicians who are, frankly, seem to be squeaky clean. Do you fit that bill? I do. Because if you are accused of something, Stephen, yeah, you're taken to court. Because accusation is an allegation, right? And you're cleared by the court. Are you guilty? Are you innocent? I mean... If you're cleared by the court, are you, are you innocent or are you guilty? I mean, let, let's, just, let's just put it that way. Why do you think? It just seems, seems strange that <laughs> the allegations seem to be sort of attracted to you, whether it's the Kenya pipeline scandal, whether it was the maize scandal when you were in agriculture. You seem to attract uh, these legal difficulties, if I can put it that way. Why do you think that is? You see, um, when you come from a background like mine, and you work hard. And people cannot just place, you know, William Ruto, son of who? Right? How, how, can he, how can he come this far? There must be some shortcuts he's done. Therefore, we have to check. There is a real discussion in this country at this very minute as to whether the candidates running for president should be allowed to spend as freely as they want in the campaign. There's been talk in Parliament of curbing campaign spending, of introducing new campaign finance regulation. Do you support that? I support that. I, I believe that um, Kenyans should be able to make choices on the basis of what the candidates stand for, not on the basis of how, many, how much money they roll out. But you, I know, are raising an awful lot of money. I mean, you've had your 100,000 shilling a plate dinners. I think some of them have raised many, many millions of shillings. Mm -hmm. You and Uhuru Kenyatta, frankly, are seen as perhaps the best endowed financially of the presidential <laughs> candidates. You might dispute that. But, <laughs> but how much are you prepared to spend to win this election? Uh, I am prepared to spend the money enough to take me to the rallies, to explain my view my position, what policy programs I have for this country, that is the much I need to be able to be elected president of Kenya. And that's the much I need to spend, to be able to explain myself to as many Kenyans as I can, time allowing. How much though? And How much do you and, think and, and it will take? You must have thought about this, you're a candidate. And resources business. allowing. And uh, uh, you've talked about uh, us raising 41 million. Yeah, 41 million shillings, uh, which is a lot of money. But, I mean, in terms of politics and how much you need to spend, even to print um, election material alone, you know, that money isn't enough, right? So you'll spend your own money, your own business money? We will spend money from friends. We will raise money. We How will, much we, will you spend? We will, raise a, we will spend as much, as much money as Hundreds we raise. Hundreds of and, millions and, of Kenyans. And we will, we, will, we will make it available to the people of Kenya to see. When we carried out our, 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 our fundraising, we didn't do it undercover. We brought it to, uh, uh, to the public domain. And you've always, if I may say so, you've always talked about transparency. And mm. you, maybe more than Uhuru Kenyatta, has said, yes, I'm a wealthy man, mm. but I'm pre prepared to account for every single penny mm. that I have made. Mm. So will you here and now on Hard Talk tell the Kenyan people how much you are worth? <laughs> um, I don't think that is a discussion for here. Certainly. But, but you not, are the man not, who says I transparency not, is I am key. Not, I am not in the league yeah of the rich people of kenya but i am not a poor man the problem for kenya is that political insecurities and instabilities seem to have slowed down kenya's attractiveness to foreign investors how do you persuade the world that kenya is not facing a new period of instability as this election campaign unfolds 
you have put it correctly. The single critical issue that we must address, and that is going to determine this election, is how to grow the economy. Who has what it takes to grow the economy of Kenya? Right? Our neighbors in Ethiopia are growing their economy at 12%. Across in Ghana, they are growing their economy at 13%. Our economy is growing between 4 4.5%. There is no reason why the Kenyan economy cannot grow by double digits, right? And there are clear, specific growth areas that if you have a government, and specifically a leader, who has been judged before, I have a track record as William Ruto. In every ministry that I have run in this country, I ran the Ministry of Agriculture when it was nowhere. It, be, it was rated number one when I was Minister for Agriculture. I went to the Ministry of Higher Education. I did the same. This country requires a leader who is a performer, who, who knows where the trouble is and goes for it and unravels it. And you think, and, just to finish and to go back to the beginning, you think you can deliver that message and you can persuade the outside world that you know how to deliver that economic growth for Kenya at the same time as appearing before an international tribunal charged with serious crimes against humanity. You see no contradiction there whatsoever. I see no contradiction at all. Because this, this, this is a job I have to do for Kenya. As for the allegations, they are allegations, right? And the people of Kenya are the jury. If the people of Kenya decide we have seen the allegations against William Ruto. We know William Ruto. He has what it takes but with to respect, move this country they are not to where the jury. we want. The jury sits in The Hague, and the jury, in if it so election, chooses, and based election, upon the evidence, can find you guilty, in, this, in which in, case you will be a president this, who is in a jail in, in, this in a foreign election, country. The, the jury are the Kenyan people. But I'm talking... I am, we are talking about an election here. We are not conducting the case in this election. This election is not about conducting the case in The Hague. This election is about electing a president for Kenya who will take Kenya to greater prosperity. And that's what Kenyans want. And there we must leave it. But William Ruto, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stephen. For being on Hard Talk. Thank you. Thank you very thank you much very indeed, much. William. Thank you.